Hello. I need to update my bio because I've been nursing now for 15 years. So apparently I wrote that on our very first low carb cruise. Um, but yes, hello, my name is Mrs. Dr. Berry. <laughs> Uh, I am a mom, a wife, a YouTuber. Um, like I said, I've been in nursing 15 years, but I worked in healthcare for nearly 20 years because I was a CNA first, then an LPN, and then an RN, and now I'm also a health coach. Um, we have two lovely, beautiful babies, which you may hear in the background. Who uh, They like to make noise, you know, they're kids. I have a YouTube channel where I share my recipes and my life. I'm just a regular person. I just happen to eat a proper human diet. So on my channel, it's a little less sciencey, and it's like, hey, food, I eat it. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been on this journey for over six years now, and just a few of the things this way of eating has done for me. No more IBS, no more PMDD. For those of you uh, who don't know what PMDD is, it's PMS on crack. You don't like yourself, no one likes you, you get on your own nerves, it's, it's not fun for anybody in the household. No more migraines, no more panic attacks. If you've ever had a panic attack, you understand that's a huge deal. You literally feel like you're dying, you cannot breathe, a panic attack, it's a horrible experience. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. My autoimmune disease is in remission and I'm on no medications, so I have Hashimoto's. No more brain fog. I had brain fog to the point where I was really thinking I probably have early onset dementia. That's how bad my brain fog and my memory was. Uh, increased energy. I couldn't get out of bed. Uh, no more depression or anxiety. And I had to go through IVF to get pregnant with Beckett, but Bonnie was a very pleasant surprise. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, after eating mostly meat, I call it ketovore, but it's just I mostly eat meat and a few vegetables. And how I found my way to ketovore was through an elimination diet, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So, on the screen, you may not be able to see this, depending on how far you back, so I'm going to walk you through it. Dr. Berry talks a lot about the PhD spectrum, um, and that can range from low carb, paleo, keto, ketovore, carnivore, lion diet. Um, this is a very, you know, this is a watered down version of this. Uh, and where you fall on this spectrum has a lot to do with food intolerance, your predisposition to diseases, or if you already have some diseases, uh, your age, and your genetics. Now, Dr. Berry calls this a proper human diet spectrum, but I think he would agree that we think that there is an optimum end of this spectrum. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Uh, and what we mean by that is most of your nutrition needs to come from real food, animal protein, animal fats, stay away from the seed oils, no packaged products, keto junk food is junk food, and it's expensive, you know? So we want you to stay closer to the ketovore spectrum, and we think most people thrive there. But on the way there, a lot of people fall into the low carb, paleo, keto. Most people start on this end and work their way over. How do you know where you fall on the spectrum? You think you, who thinks they already know? They don't need to do anything. I know where I fall on the spectrum. One person. <laughs> Two people. Okay, cool. All right, so what I want you to do is an elimination diet, and that's a type of N equals 1 experiment. I first heard this term from Dave Feldman. Was he in here? Hey, yeah. So on my first cruise, he was the first person I heard use this term, and I was like, I don't know what that means, but I don't want to embarrass myself and say that. So I'm going to tell you what it means. Um, N equals one is an experiment with the sample of one. The one is you. So you take yourself, your body, your age, your genetics, your disease, and you perform an experiment on the one. Um, so if you didn't know, who didn't know what N equals one? A few people. Oh, good. OK. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to talk about what an elimination diet is, which one you should do, um, how to successfully do it, documentation, and how to reintroduce foods. I have a lot to say and not a lot of time. So if I don't get to all my slides, you can find all this, I'm sure, Miss Debbie. But also inside the group, I run an elim diet, elimination diet challenge that is way more detailed than this. So the definition of an elimination diet is 
Um, they are the gold standard for identifying food intolerances, sensitivities, and allergies through diet. Uh, these are much cheaper to do than the expensive sensitivity test, and uh, the sensitivity tests are highly inaccurate. It's a waste of your time, a waste of your money. If you really want to know, do an elimination diet. They remove certain foods known to cause uncomfortable symptoms, reintroduce them at a later time while monitoring for symptoms. Um, the carnivore diet is the ultimate elimination diet. There are many. Who has done an elimination diet in here? If you're eating keto, you have done an elimination diet. You've already done it. You've eliminated many, many things. Most of the very hard things you've already given up. So if you feel like, I don't know, I'm intimidated by that, you've already done it. You're just taking it to another step and uh, just eliminating more things by going carnivore. So AIP is a very popular one. I did that first. It gave me no information whatsoever. It just sucked and it didn't help. Um, keto did that, was successful, moved on to carnivore. Triple B and E is another level and then the lion. So I've got a pyramid here that shows like most restrictive to least, well, yeah, less restrictive. Uh, the lion diet is ruminant meat only and salt, triple B and E, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Uh, then true carnivores, so you're eating all the different kinds of meat, but you're not eating dairy or sweeteners. I've got some slides that kind of break this down. And I don't think that you could read them. But like I said, I'm going to have these available for you guys. These are not lifestyles for this presentation. Are there people who have lifestyles that look similar to this? Yes. But if you were using this as an elimination diet, the point is it's an elimination diet. Because I get asked all the time in the group, okay, but what about coffee? Because so-and-so does lion and they have coffee and you said it's not allowed. I'm like, yes, because you're eliminating as much inflammatory type foods as possible. And while I love coffee, it could potentially affect some people that they may need to eliminate it or, you know, just see if they need to eliminate it. Right? That's the point. It's restrictive for a reason. Now, if you're not ready to do ruminant only, then there's beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, which is a little bit less restrictive, right? True carnivore, no dairy, no sweeteners. Then carnivore with, you still allow for the dairy, but you take out the sweeteners. You can do this all kinds of way. The point is, you are taking out more for a set amount of time to see if you are sensitive to the things that you eliminated. Some of you are not ready to do this, and that's totally fine, but I think everyone would benefit from doing a 90-day elimination diet at some point. And remember, you've already kind of been here, done that. It's just a more restrictive way of going about it. But you've already given up so much. Look how, I mean, that's a lot. I remember when I first heard about keto, that was not something I was going to do at all. I don't care how much he was like, you know, look at me. I was like, yeah, okay, look at me. I'm not doing that. I love pasta. I love pizza. I'm not doing that, and it's not going to help me. I just don't understand why you keep talking to me about this. And then finally, I did do it, and hey, it works. So weird. So <laughs> 90 days of consistently eating your elimination diet of choice. So whether you do the lion, triple B&E, carnivore, no dairy, no sweeteners, whichever one, you need to do it for 90 days consistently. If you guys listened to Dr. Westman the other night, he was like, Treat this as you would a medication. If your doctor said, take this four times a day, you would take it four times a day. You wouldn't be like, you know, today I'm going to just take it once. Tomorrow I'll take it three times. You wouldn't do that. You would take it consistently as prescribed. That's how you need to treat this. It is only 490 days. Before you jump into an elimination diet, you need to have some documentation. Hopefully you've already had some labs done recently. If not, have them done. It's just good to know. Run through your signs and symptoms. I tell people to start with their diagnoses. So if you have fibromyalgia, go through your pains individually. 
So if you have neck pain, you're going to rate your neck pain. We use the pain scale because I'm a nurse and I like this. It's very easy for you to remember what the numbers mean. If you look here, 10 is sad face, Three, zero, happy face, okay? So if your neck pain is a six, that's interfering with your daily life. You would like it to go away. Middle is like, it's annoying, but I can deal with it. Green is you don't have any pain. And 10 is you're in the ER and you need morphine, all right? Go through your sleep pattern and rate it on a zero to 10 scale. How good is it? How bad is it? Uh, mental health, anxiety, depression, how good is it? How bad is it? Is it, you know, so this is all a baseline. You're getting baseline labs and you're getting baseline on your symptoms as well. Stress, libido, take your measurements. It says inches, it does not say pounds. A video diary, I recommend all of my clients do this. You don't have to post it on YouTube, but it is a really good way for you to be able to look back and see yourself in real time. It's not a picture, it's you. And you can lie to your coach, you can lie to Dr. Barry, you can lie to Dr. Westman, you can lie to everybody in this room. You cannot lie to yourself. You can, but it's very, very hard for you to believe that self lie like Autumn was talking about. You know, once you hit that point where you're realizing, hopefully you listen to her. I hope you really listen to her. You have to be honest with yourself, that voice in your head, and stop talking that way and start really being vulnerable with yourself. I want you to talk to yourself about why you are doing an elimination diet. If your why is I really want to lose 20 pounds, I really want to break my stall, you need to go find a better reason. All of you have a better reason than weight loss. Every single person in here, that cannot be your number one reason. Doesn't mean you don't, you can't lose weight or you don't have to need to lose, you know, that's fine. If that's on your list of things you want, that's fine. It cannot be number one. You will not get through this because you will get on that scale, you will have the feeling, you will have the thought, and you'll just stop. It's not doing what you want it to do, blah, blah, blah. In the definition of elimination diet, did you see anywhere in there where it said, this is to break a stall? No. This is to hack your weight loss? No. This is for more than that. So talk about your goals, your symptoms, tell yourself how bad you feel. Be honest with yourself. I feel really awful. I don't know how I'm going to, you know, be able to work, have fun with my grandkids in five years if I feel this bad already. Really work on your why. It is 90 days. People get really upset when I say 90 days. That's a long time. I can't have coffee. Oh, my God. I can't have cheese. <laughs> The average lifespan of a human is 27,375 days. This is 90 days. What you're going to get from those 90 days is so worth it. You're going to understand your body better. You're going to heal a lot of things. You're going to build your own proper human diet. You won't even have to call it anything. You'll just be like, it's the me diet. I eat what is good for me, what doesn't affect me poorly, what helps me reach my goals, feel my best, get up in the morning and sleep well at night, all of those things. I don't, I call it ketovore because I am on YouTube, I have to label it. <laughs> but I don't go around and go, I'm ketovore. You know, I just eat a proper Nisha diet and I've done the elimination diet at least three times at this point and I'll probably do it again in the future. This is not something I think is one and done. I think the more restrict or more strict that you get, the more information, but that doesn't mean you have to cut the dairy the first time. Maybe you leave dairy in the first time and then the next year you do it again, you take the dairy out. Quality of life is what I want you guys to have. The information to improve on your quality of life. I'm not the stall girl. If you're in the group, you know this. If you come to me and you're like, I wanna break a stall, I'm like, you need to go somewhere else because I want the end game for you. 
And the end game is every single day for the rest of your life to feel your very best, and that has absolutely nothing to do with the stupid scale. When you're holding your first grandchild, you're not going to give a crap what the scale says. You're going to be so happy that you feel amazing to see that beautiful baby. That's what we're going for here. Optimized longevity. Optimized longevity, okay? I worked in long-term care most of my nursing career. Nursing home, that's what I call it. But now we call it long-term care because it sounds less bad, right? When you say nursing home, you're like, hmm. Long-term care, much prettier. It's not pretty. It's horrible. I worked from the time I was 19 till I was 27 in long-term care with a few jumps around. It was horrible to watch these people deteriorate every single day and absolutely no interventions were done that made them better. It just made them live longer. Who wants to be 90 and not know where they are? Nobody. Who wants to be 90 and see your great? grandkids get married. Everybody, right? So this statistic up here, you can't read it. I'm going to read it to you. So over 65 year olds in the nursing home are 18 percent, under 65, 16 percent, 75 to 84, 26 percent, and then 38 percent or 85 and up. How many of you are 65 and up in here? I feel like that's a high number, 18% for 65-year-olds. Because I worked in a nursing home, I know that that is correct. I have seen 65-year-olds not be able to feed themselves. And most of these things were preventable with diet and lifestyle changes that were never, ever going to be implemented in that nursing home. They were fed insure, you know? like. Their plates were mostly plants and very, very little protein and horrible quality protein. And I'm almost 40. For me, this statistic says there's 1.4 million people in the nursing home industry right now. By the time we get to 2050, that number is going to triple. That's me being 65. If you think the healthcare industry is going to be better by then, we need to have a real talk. It's not. And there's not going to be enough nurses. There's going to be too many people. And the people in there are going to be sick, way sicker than they are now. Because if you see the trend, we're not getting healthier. All right? You don't want to be in the nursing home, period. But in, in 2050, you for sure do not want to be in the nursing home. So again, your why needs to be something like that, not a number, not even inches. You can feel amazing and not be your goal weight. And whose goal weight is it anyways? Did you Google that? Did Dr. Google tell you what your goal weight should be? <laughs> Dr. Google don't know you, and he also doesn't care about you. I care about you. Dr. Barry cares about you. Every one of these people in here we're all supporting each other. Remember your why every single day that you get up and you want to fall into the, it's just one, just one bagel, just one piece of pie, it's just one bite of pie. If it's putting you backwards and not forwards, is it worth it? We all cheat. We all fall off the wagon. Just get back on and keep moving forwards. So back to the lips. I knew I was going to get on a soapbox. <laughs> back to the elimination diet. During this 90 days, I don't want you to worry about tracking your macros. I want you to worry about putting fatty meat in your mouth when you're hungry. So eat when you're hungry. Eat plenty of fatty meat. I don't want you to just eat butter. I don't want you to just eat chicken breasts. I want you to eat fat and meat put together, fatty ribs, ribeye, bacon, 
those things, okay? Eat till you're full. Eat when you're hungry. Do not overcomplicate this. Uh, if you are someone who struggles with temptation, hide the temptation. I tell a lot of my clients, they're like, yeah, my husband isn't doing that with me. Your food needs to be in the refrigerator. You shouldn't be in the pantry. And if anything tempts you in the refrigerator, put it in a drawer. What you need to see when you open the refrigerator is meat, eggs, butter, those type of things. The snacky snacks, that shouldn't even be anywhere near your food, okay? Have plenty of food and options. If you're doing just carnivore, that means you can have chicken, you can have bacon, you can have seafood, you can have lamb, you can have steak. Have a variety, that's still a variety. It's just a different kind of variety. Keep it simple. You don't have to have a fancy cookbook to do this, okay? Here's the formula. Grab a piece of fatty meat. Put some animal fat in a skillet. Salt it, cook it, eat it. Okay? Do it this way. Don't, Maria has a wonderful carnivore cookbook, and I think that's great if you're living a carnivore lifestyle. If you were doing carnivores and elimination diet, that's just temptation to add more things in, and it's just, well, you know, meatloaf is kind of carnivore, blah, blah. No. It, it came out of the grocery store that way. It goes into the plate that way. It's cooked, eat it raw if you want to. Like, I don't care. Just don't overcomplicate it. If you're going to go out during this 90 days, eat before you go out. Look at the menu before you get there. Know what you're going to order. So these are just some <laughs> tips to get through those 90 days. The longer you do it, the easier it gets. No protein shakes. No collagen powders. No fancy stuff. It needs, did it just get butchered? All right, that's what I want. If it had to go through a conveyor belt, and then, you know, like, with the, it, it has more than one ingredient. It needs to just be meat. Meat, salt. Meat and salt. Meat and salt. Water. I like it when people say coffee's not carnivore, and I'm like, water also is not carnivore. But we got to drink something, right? But <laughs> if you're including the coffee, just make sure you're not doing sweeteners. That's going to help. And uh, no dairy, you know, obviously don't put cream in your coffee. Now, depending, again, on which level you chose, the reintroduction stage is going to look a little different. Before you reintroduce anything back into your diet, document everything again. You now have a new baseline. If you have access to a doctor who is fine with ordering you some more labs, do that. Document it all, every single thing. Get that first piece of paper out. Do every single one again. How is my neck pain? Looks like it was an eight before, now it's a six, or maybe it's gone. Sleep, I was getting four and a half hours, now I'm getting seven. You know, that's why you need that original baseline because you're going to get to the end of the 90 days and really not remember how bad it was before unless you have a baseline that is documented accurately. Okay, so that's why you need to be honest in the beginning if you're like, my pain is not, it's not that bad. No, if you can't get up out of the bed in the morning, that's, a, that's bad pain. Okay, so be very honest with your first baseline and then again with your second baseline. One food at a time, not one food group, one food in a very small amount. So I have a calendar that you guys can download. I'll send it to Miss Debbie and she can email it, do whatever she needs to do. So let's assume you did lion diet. You're gonna wanna start with the least inflammatory food. For you, that would be a meat that you haven't been eating. So maybe you wanna reintroduce seafood. You're not gonna reintroduce the whole bar at the seafood place, you're going to reintroduce shrimp or chicken, one individual food, and it shows a very small amount, so one to two ounces. This first week we're going to talk, it's chicken, okay? One to two ounces on day one, 
one time that day. Second day, one to two ounces, or you can increase it a little if you think you want to, the second day. Then it says baseline for the rest of the week, and what that means is whatever elimination diet you've been doing for the 90 days, you're going to go back to that for the rest of the week. Every day you're documenting any change that you find, <coughs> stomach issues, skin issues, increase in pain, increase in cravings, increase in anxiety, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to do this every week with one food. If you think it may be a coincidence, like, I don't know if it was the cheese, maybe I went into the, you know, I got in the hay or something, and that's why my nose is stopped up. Do cheese again another week, just like this, though. One, one day, next day, back to baseline. If there's a pattern, it's probably the cheese, and that sucks, but, <laughs> you know. So again, one single food per week, not a food group. So. I would suggest you do nuts last. They do seem to be highly inflammatory for a lot of people. Dairy second to last. Again, delicious, but sometimes very inflammatory to some people. You're not eating a whole bag of almonds. Three to five almonds, just like that says. On one day, three to five almonds. One time a day. The next day, three to five. Small amounts. You don't need a full lot. Because if you do have a reaction and you eat a ton of almonds, it's probably going to not be great. You'll be able to tell. Spices, a lot of people, if they're doing lion, they take out the spices. So you're going to do the same thing, have a little bit of spice on your food. Again, I go into a lot of detail inside of the group. This is a real watered down version. So if you want to be walked through this, I'll be running this challenge again in August. So you can sign up for Dr. Berry's group. I'll be doing that again. Because it, it can get a little confusing, the reintroduction part you're like, but I don't, what did you say? Yeah, so I really walk you through this. And there's a lot of videos that you can watch over and over again to help you through it. I provide worksheets. So, and they prompt you because you may be like, I don't know what to think about. Did, I don't know if I saw any reaction. Um, so for dairy, some of the reactions you would be looking for, skin issues, very, very common, eczema, psoriasis, dandruff acne, those type of things, gut issues, diarrhea, constipation, um, nightshade vegetables, some people see an increase in pain, cruciferous vegetables, a lot of gut issues for some people, uh, nuts, increase in pain, headaches, migraines, um, and then for how long you do the reintroduction, you're just going to do it to the point where you're done reintroducing the foods that you want to eat. If you don't like broccoli, don't bring it back. <laughs> okay? Don't waste your time on the food that you're like, you know, I just, no. Who cares if you're sensitive to broccoli if you don't like it? Bring back the foods that you want to include in your proper human diet so you can understand if they can be in your proper human diet. Can they be in there sometimes? Can they, they be in there a lot? Are they something that are a little of a cheat? You know, just build your own PhD is the point, all right? And this is a great way to do it. Um, here's some comments from our members who do the elimination diet. Um, increased energy, fat loss, 90% pain-free at the end of the 90 days. Better energy, less brain fog, less, less arthritis pain, lost 70 pounds. Again, not the point. Ignore that. But it can happen, okay? It's a, it's a cherry on top of the elimination diet cupcake. Freedom from having everything revolve around meals. People say, I look like a whole new you, okay? More endurance, more energy, more curiosity. Like this person just wasn't interested in anything and now they're building stuff. Increased energy, way less cravings. My brain is calm and relaxed. No more being angry because I'm hungry. My brain fog is gone. I feel as though I'm reversing early stages of dementia, which is the whole reason I'm doing carnivore. Uh, this person said, just completed 90-day triple B&E and lost 51 pounds. And my knees and joints are less painful. This person had a lower A1C, increased energy, clarity, muscle endurance, calmness, ketones increase, weight loss, fat burn, uh, and they did like the body composition scan. 
35 pounds of weight loss, joint pain gone, no more PPIs, that's for acid reflux. Increased energy, cleaner teeth, smoother skin, blood pressure greatly reduced, decreasing medications, awesome mental outlook, better sleep, and cravings gone, total freedom from food. This last one's my favorite. Multiple autoimmune diseases, 95% eliminated. Zero lupus symptoms. Zero Crohn's symptoms. My Hashimoto's appears to be in remission. I had torn meniscus in my right leg. I was going to have surgery. Now I'm not. All of these things. There's some weight loss in there, but they're not the biggest deal because it's not about, it's not just about this. It can be some about this, but it's about this, okay? And the freedom. And at the end, you will have such clarity. You'll be able to listen to your body, see what changes you need to make, and feel much more in tune with this body that you are stuck with forever. So I hope you guys give the proper human diet elimination challenge a try because I think that you're going to like it once you get over the hump of this freaking sucks, you know? <laughs> So thank you very much.